So we're going to today, we're going to look at the kinetic theory of matter as it applies to the gases. We're, we're going to look at the, the kinetic theory of matter as it applies to gases. And um, so the same fundamental assumptions apply. The same things apply. The matter is made of particles, particles are in motion. The hotter it is, the, more they go. the faster they go. Also, the hotter it is, it takes up more space. Takes up more space. So, so we're going to apply those concepts to the specific case of gases. In order to do so, we have got to start with a couple of concepts, two of which we've already talked about a lot this year. Okay, so no surprise here. What is volume? The total space something occupies. Total space something occupies. No surprises. So, if if we have something that's two liters and it becomes four liters, we would say the volume increased or decreased? Increased. Increased, exactly. Not a, not a surprise there. The second concept, we've already defined this as well, temperature. So temperature is the of the of an indication of the degree of warmth or the average kinetic energy of the molecule. So this is that average kinetic energy piece is the part that's going to inform a lot of what we do with the gas loss. Because the average kinetic energy, kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So as the temperature goes up, the velocity goes up, the energy goes up. So one of the things we know, if we take the temperature of something, that something with a higher temperature, the molecules are moving faster. Now, here's a new concept for today. This is new. This one, this one's a little tricky. It's called the number of molecules. Okay? So what do you suppose number of molecules actually means? It, yeah, how many molecules there are? How, how it, it, it is if we have something, if we if we have like this many molecules and we have this many molecules, we put them together, we have more molecules. So it's literally the count. But molecules are very, very small, right? So, so if you were if you were going to sell eggs in a grocery store, how many, how would you sell them? By egg by egg, or do you sell them by the dozen. by the carton or the dozen? So dozens for eggs. So if, if we're using gallons for milk, but gallon is a volume measure, not a number of measure. Anybody do bottle rockets? Me. Okay, you get twelve packs of twelve. What is that called? A bundle. A bundle is called a gross. 20, 120, 144 bottle rockets is a gross. Molecules are measured in something that is analogous to dozens and grosses, which is called moles. We, we, don't, we don't say we have 100 molecules. We're going we're gonna to measure molecules in a unit called moles. So how many molecules are in a mole? A lot. A million. A bazillion. There's a bazillion. Bazillion is a real word. I looked it up in the dictionary. It is a, uh, an exaggerated number, meaning a lot. The actual number of molecules in a mole is 6.022140857 times 10 to the 23rd. That means a 1 in 23 zeros. That's a lot of zeros. So 10 to the 23rd. It's a really, really big number. And um, I think I may have put that actually on here somewhere. Yep. Actually written out six zero two one to all of those zeros. That is how many. So we're never going to count them one two three four five. Six. We're not going to count them. We're going to count them by the mole. So if we say I have one mole of of gas, and I add another mole to it, now how many moles do I have? Two moles. Two moles. If I have two moles of gas and I double it, how many do I have? Four. Four, very simple. So the concept of how many molecules is, is done by moles. And just as you would expect, if you increase the number of molecules, there's going to be molecules there and it's going to have an effect on, on what we see. The, third, the fourth concept is pressure. So the example I like to use for pressure is the, the little kitty blow-up castles. So there's a nice little cube of space in the blow-up castle and you've got a bunch of kids in there bouncing around, right? So pressure 
is the force exerted by the kids bouncing around hitting the side of the, of the blow up castle, right? Yeah. Birthday party time, you got the blow up castle, kids are bouncing around. So we can do some things, we can say, what happens to the pressure if we double the number of kids? More kids, hit the wall. more kids are going to hit the wall. And if more kids hit the wall, the pressure is going to go up. So pressure is the, the sum of all the forces of molecules hitting the wall. So in a container like this, the, the air pressure inside is the sum of all the air molecules hitting the sides of the container. Okay? So we're going to do some things. We're going to look at what happens if. So I have a little volume of air inside the balloon, right? If I put more molecules in, what's going to happen to the volume? It's going to expand. Okay. Now you've probably never seen this happen before in your whole life. I have seen it. You have seen balloons blown up before? Yes. <sighs> what was I thinking? So by putting more molecules in, the volume of the balloon increases. Yes. So if I change the number of molecules, it's going to have an effect on the size of the object. Now some things don't expand when we put more molecules in. We have some athletes in the room. Anybody, the volleyball players? What happens when the ball doesn't bounce right? What do you do? If it doesn't bounce, so if it's not, if it's like flat, what do you do? Pull it up. You pump it up. So you put more molecules in. Does the ball get noticeably larger, like a balloon? No. You don't really notice the size, but the, the but the ball becomes more firm, which means the pressure has increased. So adding adding molecules to something that doesn't change size increases the pressure. So if the size can increase, pressure stays the same, the volume increases. If the volume cannot change, more molecules makes the pressure go up. Okay? So we got pressure. Alright? So that's the effect of the number of molecules. We're going to do the effect of temperature on the molecules. So this is full of air and the volume of the sealed container includes the volume of the balloon. Okay, So as the heat goes into the container, the molecules are going to expand. expand. And as they expand, because they're moving faster, they take up more space. As they expand, they're going to run out of the top of the tube and into the, into the balloon. So by keeping the pressure the same, and we're going to pretend that the pressure stays the same, I'm going to pretend that the, the elasticity of the balloon isn't there. The volume of the balloon is going to change because the pressure, cha the temperature changes. As the molecules take up more space, and as we let this, as we let this cook along here, um, in this other container, we're going to seal it, which is going to cause the volume to be a constant. Okay, so you can already see the balloon is taking up a lot more space. And this one, when we heat this, so there's, there's water in here. So the water is going to move faster. The water vapor, the, the, gas, of the, the gas molecules of water are going to move faster as it heats up. And so people who are watching the video are going to say, yeah, well, the water boiled. We know there's a phase change. Well, that's next week. We're going to talk about phase changes. Uh, some of my students are going to teach that class for you guys next week. So phase change is going to take place, but, but today we're looking at it in terms of the, the, the heat increasing the pressure. So the pressure is going to go up. So I'm going to move the Bunsen burner over here, and now we're going to begin to heat this one up. So we can see as these molecules got hotter, they moved faster, they took up more space. In this case, the uh, temperature is going to go up, but the container can't change size. All right, so this is like when we're pumping up a volleyball or we're pumping up a tire on the car. So as this heat goes up, what's also building up inside? Someone said it. Pressure. The pressure is building up. So if the volume stays the same, increasing temperature raises pressure. Okay. So this is the same thing we have with the balloon on the opposite. Adding more molecules increases volume if the pressure stays the same. Adding more temperature uh, and the pressure built up and popped off the top.
That's what we were going for That's there. Scary. So, as the pressure builds up, as the temperature goes up, the pressure builds up. As the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. So if we hold the volume constant, adding temperature increases pressure. If we hold the pressure constant, adding temperature increases volume. If we hold the pressure constant, adding molecules increases volume. And if we hold the volume constant, pumping up a ball increases the pressure. So we have the four things that are interacting, pressure, volume, temperature, and number of molecules. Does that make sense? Yep. Pretty cool? Yeah. Yep. Yes. 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 yes.